I'm Adam, and welcome to Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. Tonight, she's the last true pharaoh of Egypt, the queen of the Nile, history's greatest heartbreaker. Corpse Talk! Corpse Talk! History chat about this Corpse Talk! It's Cleopatra! Welcome, welcome. Now, Cleopatra, yours is the most famous Egyptian name I can think of. Greek. Uh, excuse me? It's a Greek name. My family wasn't originally from Egypt at all. You're already full of surprises. I think you better show us. <laughs> When we arrived in Egypt, we had to work hard to fit in so that the Egyptians would accept us as their pharaohs. So not technically Egyptian, but definitely the most famous queen of ancient Egypt. Hey, not so much of the ancient. Queen of Egypt, yes. But Egypt already had a long history by the time I turned up. Let me show you. I was born about 2,000 years before you. <laughs> and the Great Pyramid of Giza was built over 2,600 years before me. So I'm actually closer to your time than I am to the pyramids. Wow, that's mind-blowing! There's no need to shout. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I suppose that serves me right for calling you ancient. I forgive you, darling. Just as long as the rest of your questions aren't simply all about all my famous good looks and charms. <laughs> oh, of course not. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, there you are in not-so-ancient Egypt. What was it like? Oh, you know, famine, disease, wars. Life back then was tough. Really? It doesn't look that tough. Well, not for me, no. But then I was a princess. Raised to become a queen, tutored in science, philosophy, and to speak nine languages. Impressive. But not impressive enough to be allowed to be queen by yourself when your father died. No. Society wouldn't stand for a woman ruling alone. So I suppose you had to get married? Yes, to my ten-year-old brother. Sorry, did you say brother? I had to marry my little brother, Ptolemy, yes. I did what I had to do to stay in power. The ancient world sure was different. It was the worst. I mean, everyone knows how annoying younger brothers can be, don't they? Boring your stuff without asking. <laughs> Embarrassing you in front of your friends. Stealing your throne and trying to kill you to do it. <laughs> yeah, try to kill. Uh, wow. So what did you do about your brother, uh, husband? Ah, uh, husband. <laughs> I did what any reasonable older sister would do. I fought a civil war to get my throne back. But didn't you need a powerful ally to help you? I did. And they didn't come much more powerful than the Romans. Julius Caesar, undisputed leader of Rome. I know, I know. I'm amazing. Ah! Sorry, sorry. sorry. Huh? Special delivery. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Is this really how you two met? Uh, I mean, kind of. Caesar was in my palace meeting with my annoying little brother, who had posted guards to keep me out. <laughs> but I knew I could win Caesar over if I smuggled myself past the guards and into the palace. Hello. Now we meet to Rome. He took you back to Rome. Uh, are we there yet? I can see it. I can see it. Right. I guess your plan worked. Of course it worked. Though not all the Romans were so thrilled. What do they know? It was true love. Let's get real, shall we? I needed your army to defeat my brother in the Civil War. I mean, you were old enough to be my dad. What? Awkward. Oh, look! What's that? A murderous mob of your former friends who think you've become a terrible tyrant and want to get rid of you. <laughs> oh, no! Bye, darling. So, that was the end of your Roman holiday. Total disaster. I was lucky to get home in one piece. I needed a plan B, and fast. Um, who's that? 
Meet Plan B. What's up? Mark Anthony, Roman Consul, General, and wannabe successor to Caesar. At your service. Didn't waste any time, did you? You snooze, you lose. Your kingdom? Anyway, he was quite a sweetie, really. Terribly romantic. Okay, my darling, I just wanted to let you know that. I love you, Cleo! Not now, though, Mark. I'm busy. Huh, what a guy. I know. But sadly, Rome declared war on him, as they thought I'd made him soft, and that I wanted to take over their empire. Oh dear, and you also lost the war. Was there a plan C? I'm afraid not. The new leaders of Rome wanted to parade me through the streets as a prisoner. Can you imagine the humiliation? I'd rather drink poison. So what did you do? I drank poison. Um, okay, wow. Still. <laughs> I think you've shown us that there's a lot more to Cleopatra than just beauty. It was brains that kept you on top for so long, and a little ruthlessness. Oh, thanks! I like you. Hey, how about we team up? Uh, I, I thought you didn't have a plan C. Strictly professionally, I mean. Think about it. Between my tactical genius and your uh, comfy chairs, we could build an entertainment empire. Cleopatra Talk! Can I say thanks, but no thanks? Please don't fight a civil war against me. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough! Classic! I, I don't mean ancient classic, I mean funny classic. Cleopatra, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Join us again on Cleopatra Talk... Uh, Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. Hello, I'm Adam, and welcome to Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. Tonight's guest was the fifth emperor of Rome, and some say the worst emperor of all time. But was he? Let's find out. It's the all singing, all dancing Emperor Nero! Hey, Salve, Salve! Let me sing for you. My voice is as pure oh. as snow. Everyone tells me so. Maybe later, Nero. <laughs> your loss. We've got to talk about your seriously controversial reign. <laughs> now, you weren't always destined to become Emperor of Rome. It only happened thanks to some seriously shady shenanigans by your mum. Oh, her. In fact, she's so important to your story, we thought we'd just dig her up for a little family reunion. <laughs> what? Please give a big corpse talk welcome to Nero's mum, Agrippina Mar You've got to be kidding me. Hello, Nero. Aren't you going to let the mother sit down? Oh, Mom. I'd do anything for my little emperor. Oh. I married my own uncle, Claudius. Ooh. And persuaded him to make you his heir instead of his own son. And then had him killed. Mm. But do I get any thanks? Oh. <sighs> It's bad enough that you tried to run my life. You don't have to run my interview, too. What are you gonna do? Murder me again? Uh, oh, well, yes. It says here that you tried to kill your mum in a collapsible boat. Oh, come on. I was only a teenager when I got the top job. It wasn't easy trying to be emperor with your mum hanging around the whole time telling you what to do. Eat some fruit. I saw that! Oh, she was a nightmare to get rid of. Far too clever to fall for any of the usual killing methods, like poisoning. <laughs> so, somewhat brilliantly, I had my people design a special boat that would break in two when Mum was on board and drown her. <laughs> But what my little emperor didn't realize, I was a fantastic swimmer! Mm. Hmm. 
So how did you get rid of her in the end? I just had her stopped. See? It's like Mother told you. The old ways are the best ways. Once she was out of the picture, I could get on with being Emperor of Rome. Alone. Like the way I want to do the rest of this interview. Hm. Fine. Do what you want. You always do anyway. Hands, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Uh, what do you think were your greatest achievements as Emperor of Rome? Everything I did was great. Under my amazing rule, things boomed like you wouldn't believe. Everyone loved me. Apart from the people who rose up to fight against you. Britannia, Judea... Ungrateful losers. And back at home in Rome, I built amazing public spaces and entertained the people with the greatest gladiators. You love to put on a good show, that is true. You toured Greece, even competing in the Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah, I was amazing. I loved Greece. Loved the culture, the food, everything. I won the biggest chariot race, of course. Yes, only because you had ten horses, while the rest of your competitors just had four. And even then you fell out. I'm OK. Thank you, thank you. That was pretty amazing, all in all. Were you really, though? Didn't Rome burn to the ground while you stood around playing fiddle? Liar! I'm only saying what I heard. No, I used to play the liar, not the fiddle. And anyway, it's beside the point. When the great fire happened, I didn't even know about it. I was catching some rays at my beach house, 30 miles away. Can I sing now? Whoa, no time for that. We've got to get back to Rome. After the fire, I rebuilt the city. Bigger and better than ever before. Well, you did. But you also built yourself a golden palace right where people's homes had been? Left a bit, right a bit. Perfetto! So what? In politics, you have to give people what they want. And what I wanted was a massive golden palace full of statues of me. And didn't you try to pin the blame for the Great Fire of Rome on a small religious group? Let me drop some Nero knowledge on you. When times are tough, you give people shiny distractions like sporting events. And find a small powerless group, like the Christians were back then, and blame them for everything bad that happens. <laughs> I suppose your leaders don't do that kind of thing these days. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Anyway, Nero, it's been nice to have you on the show. Wait a second. You haven't even asked me about my incredibly popular singing recitals. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure we have time. I command you to roll the flashback. <laughs> OK. I wowed audiences wherever I went with my powerful, beautiful voice. No one wanted to leave. Well, no one could leave because you locked all the doors. Some people even faked their own death to get out of having to listen to you. Where are you getting all this negative rubbish from? The scholars who wrote about your reign, Tacitus, Suetonius. Fake historians. Now let me sing. Hey. My people demand it. <laughs> ah, not again. Ah, what a shame. And that's all we have time for. Join us next time on Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. What an artist dies in me. Silly boy, should have listened to your mother. Corpse Talk, Corpse Talk. History chat about this and that. Corpse Talk, Corpse Talk. I'm Adam, and welcome to Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. On tonight's show, one of England's most ruthless kings. Will he conquer us with his charm? Let's find out! Corpse Talk! Corpse Talk! History chat about this and that! Uh, that's my 
Spicy? <laughs> and that's totally fine. So, William, you were born in the year 1028 in Normandy, France, and built up your power base from scratch. How did you do it? By conquering. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, William the Conqueror. That, that figures. Fighting battles, laying siege to towns, cutting the hands of people who stood against me, you know, the usual warlord methods. And with Normandy mine all mine, I turned my attention elsewhere. Uh, an anger management course? Conquering England! Ah! Oh, I wish you'd stop doing that. But if you don't mind me asking, why did you think the throne of England could be yours when, uh, how do I put this? You ruled Normandy and had absolutely no claim to England at all. I'll show you. But oh, please, not the hand. This is Edward, the King of England. He was always in church confessing his sins, so they called him the Confessor. <gasps> you guys had such cool names. What do you think about one for me? Uh, oh, Adam the Asker of Questions? Oh, Adam the... Shh. Oh, sorry. Oh, King Edward didn't have any children, and he'd spent much of his life in Normandy. So he said, Listen, William, my boy, when I die, you will be the next king of England. Your victory! Shush! So it was that easy? It should have been. But this big, shocked English earl called Harold Godwinson wanted to steal my throne for himself. Hello? <gasps> Curse that Harold. I knew I'd have to crush him one day. And then, as luck would have it, my rival got shipwrecked off the coast of Normandy and fell right into my lap. And let me guess, you cut off his hands? No! We became best buddies! I took a hunt hunting, we did a couple of sieges together. You know, typical medieval guy stuff. <laughs> oh, uh, that's nice. But it was all part of my cunning plan, because then I made him swear a sacred oath to me. <laughs> Time we probably headed over to <clears throat> Sacred Oath Reenactment Corner. Reenactment Corner. Okay, let's reenact the scene. You play Harold Godwinson. No. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll play Harold Godwinson, and you be you. <sighs> Just like that. Perfect. Now you must swear the oath. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I, Harold Godwinson, do solemnly swear to let William become King of England when Edward the Confessor dies. High five. <sighs> uh, you don't look very happy. No, because when Edward the Confessor died, you went back on your promise and took the throne of England for yourself. Die, you Oathbreaker! Whoa, easy! This is a thousand years ago! We're only playing! I'm not really Harold! Time to teach you a lesson! Fine, but let's do it in a flashback! Go to flashback! The year is 1066, and my army of storming Normans is ready to invade. Uh, but my invasion fleet needed wind to fill its sails, and it was blowing in the wrong direction. All we could do was sit here on our bottoms in Normandy. Oh! Uh, it took weeks for the wind to change, so we could finally set sail. Ready for an epic takedown for the throne of England? Let's rumble! Ooh, I'm afraid the corpse talk budget doesn't stretch to massive medieval battles. <laughs> oh, please don't hurt me! Ha! There is another way. The Bayeux Tapestry. A 70 meter long woven story in fabric. It's like an ancient comic book. Made to celebrate my beautiful victory. Ah! Uh, yeah, really beautiful. Look, Harold's army held the high ground. And we had to ride uphill to attack his shield wall. No one thought I could win, but I was smarter than Harold. I tricked the English into thinking we were retreating. Oh, I'm running away! When they stupidly came down the hill to chase us, Yahoo! Their shield wall broke! And it was game over, baby! 
Ouais, cavalerie Captain Two Piece. Uh, ah. Ooh, looks like Harold got an arrow right in the eye. What? Nah, he was hacked to bits by my man. Well, you know what tapestry weavers are like. Made it up as they go along. No, the point is, I was the winner, and Harold was the loser. Loser. So, you finally got the throne of England. And the rest is history. Years later, I carried out a big survey of the whole of England called the Doomsday Book to find out exactly how much I conquered. <laughs> Doomsday does sound like your kind of book. Oh, one last thing. Didn't your story have an unusually violent end? Yeah, well, I, I fell off a horse, died, and then I sort of blew up. You mean, like, exploded? Look, it was summer. My corpse swelled up with gas. The monks, they stuffed me into a coffin. And, uh... Kaboom! It wasn't my fault, stupid monks. I'm going to conquer your soul now. <laughs> Join us next time on Cook Talk, the, the show that brings the dead famous to life. I'm Adam, and welcome to Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. Please be upstanding and welcome today's regal guest. There's never been a cooler queen! Corpse Talk! The Corpse Talk! History chat about this Ooh. and that! The Corpse Talk! The Corpse Talk! When the dead famous come to life! It's Queen Elizabeth the First of Is there all good, Your Majesty? The royal posterior has landed. You may now be seated. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> now, Queen Elizabeth, Your Majesty, you had a pretty complicated childhood, didn't you? Something of a historical soap opera. Previously on Tudor Times. Temperamental tyrant King Henry VIII wants a son to succeed him, but when first wife Catherine of Aragon produces a daughter, Mary, he divorces her, and she's Aragon. Oh. Enter wife number two, plucky Anne Boleyn, but will she give him the son he's always wanted? Is it a boy? Um... Mm. Yeah, sadly, when Papa found out I was a girl, he was furious. <laughs> Talk about losing your head over nothing. Then he declared my mother a traitor and had her beheaded. Oops, sorry, Your Majesty. Oh, it gets worse. Dad banned me from inheriting the throne, and I had no fewer than four stepmums by the time I was a teenager. Family get togethers must have been awkward. Uh, quite. But no matter, when my father finally died, a woman eventually inherited the throne anyway. Woohoo! Yes! Go, Team Liz! I mean, congratulations, ma'am. No, 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 not me. Lady Jane Grey was next in line. You're right, babe. And they got rid of her after only nine days. Uh, bye, then. Making way for my older half-sister, Mary. Hello. It's a lot to take in, I know. Just roll the soap opera thingy. Previously, in Tudor times, Mary has ascended to the throne. But because we have different religions, she's Catholic and I'm Protestant, I'm accused of treason and thrown in the Tower of London. Meanwhile, Mary marries King Philip II of Spain. Hola! But when Mary gets ill and dies, uh. it's finally my turn to take the throne. Yes! Oof, what a ride! I bet every king, prince and duke in Europe was lining up to win your hand in marriage. Well, yes, but dear me, you should have seen them. I think we can arrange that. Let's play Date or Ditch! Royal number one! <laughs> oh, it's King Philip of Spain! Quite the catch! Hola? My dead half-sister's husband. Ew, no thanks. Adios. Royal number two is Duke Francis of Anjou. Bonjour. You're like a frog. 
hearts. Oh. Oh. Royal number three. It's Prince Eric of Sweden. Hey. He was poisoned by his enemies. Next. These are heavy, you know. Hello. Oh, Robert Dudley. Oh, I've known him since I was a little girl. Oh, hello. <laughs> Do I detect a royal flush? Oh. No, nonsense, no, no, oh, it's right a little bit. <laughs> oh, very well, yes, well, yes, he was very, um, oh, what would you say? A hottie? A scrummy bit of crumpet? A total dreamboat? Well, if all that means attractive, then, then yes, he was. Oh, <gasps> sorry, ma'am, I'm being told Studley Dudley shouldn't have been included. <laughs> He's already married. Yeah, I know he was. Okay, fine. Whew. Matchmaking is exhausting. Yeah, most tiresome. In the end, I decided not to marry anyone. I didn't want to hand over England to some foreign prince. And even if I married a commoner, in those days a husband always outranked his wife, even if she was, you know, the queen. You were always pretty careful about making big decisions, weren't you? Well, you would have been two in my shoes. One false move and my reign would be finished. But I made a virtue of the single life with a rather cunning makeover. I called myself the Virgin Queen. And declared that I was married to the whole of England. Oh, imagine the size of the wedding cake. Not that I still didn't have to work hard to avoid being overthrown. Most of all, by my half-sister Mary. Well, you haven't seen her since she died and left you the throne. But she's here tonight! Ha! <laughs> That's Mary, Queen of Scots. You were talking about the other Mary. Sorry, what's her story then? Not here. Get back here! Unfortunately, Mary, Queen of Scots, kept plotting with other Catholics to replace me, so I had no choice but to have her executed. Sheesh, that rival religion thing again. Oh, it was a right pain in the... Royal posterior. Yeah, there's that one. Mm. And, and indeed, executing my cousin only provoked the most powerful Catholic in Europe, King Philip of Spain. Hola! He was so cross, he dispatched a fleet of warships. Oh, oh, I know, I know this bit. <sighs> this was the Spanish Armada. Over to you, Your Majesty. Oh, well, first we sent in fire ships. <laughs> Job done. No, it didn't work. So we blasted them with cannons. So cool. <laughs> but they survived. So then, we finally did nothing. Wait, what? Well, we didn't need to because a big old storm came out of nowhere, blew them all north, and that was the last we saw of them. <laughs> Good times. A dramatic end to a dramatic reign, Your Majesty. Aha! Uh -huh. There's plenty more where that came from. I ruled for another 15 years. Did I tell you about the time? Sadly, that's all we've got time for. So let's save it for another time, ma'am. Very well, commoner. I shall take my leave. Good day to you. Oh, sh shall I, uh, uh, Oh, nah. Join us next time on Corpse Talk, the show that brings the dead famous to life. Uh, can somebody order a new chair? <laughs> Talk. History chat about